Okay, we're going to talk about 6B, the Louisiana Purchase, but before we do, let's look at the overall picture here, 6, standard 6. The student will analyze the impact of territorial expansion, the population growth, and its impact on the early decades of the new nation. So what we're looking at here with the Louisiana Purchase is the territorial expansion and that impact on the early decades of the new nation. So 6B says, describe Jefferson's diplomacy in obtaining the Louisiana Purchase from France and the territory's exploration by Lewis and Clark. So we have two different things that are a major target or focus. Our primary focus is on the Louisiana Purchase, uh, and we're going to look at how it's going to impact territorial expansion in the United States. So we're looking at Jefferson's diplomacy, and that's political interactions with other nations. And uh, number two, Louisiana Territory is going to be territorial expansion of the Louisiana Territory. Lewis and Clark, uh, we're going to be looking at exploration of the Northwest Patches to the Pacific Ocean, and then some more geography with the Great Plains and the Mississippi River. We want to look at the Great Plains and the Mississippi River, very important. Alright, so let's go straight to it. Uh, what are the reasons why did President Thomas Jefferson, why did he want to buy Louisiana? And uh, if we look at a map of the United States, Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson knew the geography around the Mississippi River, and he knew about the Appalachian Mountains and the, the eastern or Atlantic seaboard where the original colonies were. He knew this geography well, and up here in the Great Lakes area. Uh, one of the things uh, that was going on around this time is that this large, expansive, uh, Appalachian Mountains kind of separated the East or Atlantic coast over here where the original 13 colonies were colonized and now the states are there. A lot of the states uh, created under the Constitution uh, with, their con with their state constitutions and with the uh, ratification of the Constitution are developed over in this area and they laid claims to a lot of this land past the Appalachian Mountains. And then there's another area uh, we talked about in, in the last standard 6A, this uh, Northwest Territory that is now surveyed and that is now going to be sold in pieces. And so we have these rivers over here on the East Coast or Atlantic Coast helping move transport and goods across uh, uh, out of the eastern part of the United States to the ocean to take to Europe to sell. Okay, so this eastern seaboard can use its rivers to transport the goods, trade, engage in commerce, and uh, that's over here. But they're separated. The west out here could not transport their goods across the Appalachian Mountains easily. So it's very costly to, to carry goods from the, the Northwest Territory out here across the Appalachian Mountains. Okay. So what they had going for them is this, this Ohio River here, of course, and then the mighty Mississippi coming down here in the middle of the continent, the largest river in the United States, this Mississippi River coming down here in empty and out down here in the port of New Orleans. And this port of New Orleans, the United States used while it's under the uh, occupation of of Spain and then France, but Spain and France were charging uh, for for Americans to, to uh, use that port to move goods back and forth to up the Mississippi River. So the United States owns all land east of the Mississippi River. It doesn't own Florida. Florida is part of Spain after the Revolutionary War. So how do we how do we get this Northwest Territory in this western part? past the Appalachian Mountains. How do we get, you know, commerce and goods to foreign markets? Well, we had to go down the Mississippi. They had to use the Mississippi and go down and go out the port. But they were charged there, and it cost a lot of money. And then get it out in the Gulf of Mexico, and then come around Florida and go out to Europe. So there was, the United States were really, was really fragmented by this Appalachian Mountain Range. And so goods could not be moved to the east very quickly. And then we had foreign control of the port down here that the Mississippi at the Mississippi Delta, where it emptied out into the Gulf of Mexico, caused problems in trade and commerce. 
So Thomas Jefferson really understood that the Mississippi was a vital river, and, and the United States controlled the Ohio River Valley. But there were other rivers, like the Missouri River here, and the Arkansas River, and the Red River. You know, the basin that come from the Mississippi River was far and wide into the interior of the continental United States, and or this continent. And most of it did not belong to the United States, but here is this huge water basin coming from the Mississippi. There's the Missouri Basin, Arkansas, Red and White Rivers, Lower Mississippi here, the Tennessee River, the Ohio River. Thomas Jefferson was very, very well aware of these river systems in the Gulf of Mexico and how it would help the western part of the United States. So Thomas Jefferson really and truly wanted to get access to the port of New Orleans down here, the delta where the Mississippi emptied out into, to help with trade and commerce within the United States. So New Orleans, the port there, he wanted to buy it. And at the time, in 1803, it was owned by France. And here's another little visual of the Mississippi River going all the way up and how it stretched out into the western part of where the United States was. And so we see these rivers are crucially important for United States trade in the West. And all right, so let's describe Thomas Jefferson's diplomacy in purchasing the Louisiana Purchase. All right, so that's a focal point. Thomas Jefferson, in hopes that he could get this port of New Orleans here, he authorizes actually $10 million to purchase this port of New Orleans. He's going to send a delegation to offer to France to purchase just the port of New Orleans down here for $10 million. And he's going to send two people. James Monroe here, eventually will be the President of the United States, but he sends him to purchase Louis the, port of, the port of New Orleans so we can get so the United States could get access to the Mississippi River. And he's going to send Robert Livingston to France. And he, he gives them instructions to go there and and negotiate the purchase of the Port of New Orleans. Uh, you know, he says, don't jump to the price real quick. Ask, ask, negotiate with France and ask them, how much could we purchase the Port of New Orleans for? Now, he authorized them to use $10 million to, to purchase this port. And this port would give United States citizens in the West access to the Mississippi River, and this port access to trade and commerce. So that's what these guys went to do. Okay. Now the diplomacy that's going to be used between Monroe and Livingston with Jefferson's instruction is to go offer Napoleon Bonaparte purchase of that port. Now Napoleon was engaged in uh, war in Europe. He's trying to take over Europe. So in 1803, he was having some problems. There was a slave revolt in Haiti, which France owned, and he was having close, coming close to a war with Great Britain. So he needed money desperately to carry out these war campaigns. So he authorizes one of his agents to offer to sell all of the Louisiana territory, not just the port, but all of the territory for $15 million. So Jefferson just wanted to buy this down here, uh, and with the diplomatic negotiations, he had an offer for only $5 million more to buy all of this territory we call Louisiana Territory, all of French holdings for $15 million, not just the port down here. So President Jefferson has a conflict of interest. He, he eventually buys the Louisiana Purchase for $15 million. He takes the offer and runs with it. But there was a conflict in his ideas, and there's going to be a conflict at home because some of the people thought the purchase was unconstitutional. Jefferson himself felt the purchase was unconstitutional. You know, he really wanted to buy Louisiana, but in the past, in his arguments against Alexander Hamilton and the Federalist, Thomas Jefferson with his Democratic Republican Party, if you recall, he believed in a strict interpretation of the Constitution. His philosophy was. If the, if the Constitution's language did not expressly say that he could do something, then he was restricted as President of the United States from doing it. In other words, he could not purchase the Louisiana Purchase because nowhere in the Constitution did it say he could buy it. Okay. 
So the opportunity to buy the Louisiana Purchase challenges strict constructionist view. Now, what do we mean by the strict interpretation or strict constructionist view? A definition uh, we mean by this is a political opinion that an individual should interpret or understand the Constitution for what it what is exactly stated. What does it say? What is expressed there? And characteristics are the literal interpretation of the words by what is actually written. In other words, face value of words actually written. So a strict constructionist idea was you couldn't do anything that was not specifically stated within the body of the Constitution. So did it say in the Constitution the president could buy foreign lands? It did not. So under his strict constructionist view, he could not. Now an example of this would be if Mr. Howell, the, our principal, says to you as, as a student that you can't go to the snack machine during instruction time. Well, that what he means, Mr. Howell means by that is you cannot go to the snack machine while your while class is going on. Okay, so from a strict constructionist viewpoint, you can't go while class is going on. Now, a broad constructionist view is going there, people are going to read between the lines. Okay. Uh, they accepted in the implied reasoning for phrases and clauses. Now, people who believe in a broad construction of the Constitution and interpret it broadly use the elastic clause or necessary and proper clause. Say that you can do anything that's necessary and proper uh, to carry out the duties of the United States. In, in an example, if you used a broad construction of what Mr. Howell told you to do, you could say, you could argue to Mr. Howell if you get caught that, you know, the teacher was not teaching at the time in the classroom, uh, so you visited the snack machine, meaning uh, can't go to the snack machine during instruction time. You would manipulate things and look at it broadly and say, well, no instruction was going on. A uh, bad way to manipulate, you're still going to get in trouble, but let's use it as a common example of the difference between the interpretation uh, that is literal and one where you can use broad construction to read between the lines. So Thomas Jefferson had the strict interpretation, but eventually he goes against his own ideas and he buys Louisiana. Uh, and the reasons he buys Louisiana Purchase is he, he wants to remove France's presence in the region. And uh, he believed that if uh, to purchase Louisiana Purchase would protect U.S. trade access to the Port of New Orleans, and it would provide a free passage to the Mississippi River, and allow for further westward expansion of the Americas, American United States of America. So these are the reasons Jefferson buys the Louisiana Purchase, and uh, he says that uh, you know the United States has a a power that is inherent as a country to do what is the best right, best for the interests of the people. So these are the three reasons why Jefferson buys Louisiana Purchase. Alright, so he pays 15, 15 million dollars for it. It is going to double the size of the United States. That's the impact of the purchase. Double the size of the United States and he's going to purchase for 15 million dollars over 800,000 square miles of land. So if we look at the United States before the Louisiana Purchase, here it is, blue, Spain on Florida at the time. Here's the Louisiana Purchase. It's going to double the size of the United States. Okay. So territorial expansion is going to occur. All right, so here's a different map of the Louisiana Purchase. Now, a large part of the Louisiana Purchase, you know, a region of this country is what we call the Great Plains. Let's look at a different map. And here's the southeast, here's the northeast, the midwest, uh, and here's what we call the Great Plains running down through the center of the country. A large part of this pr purchase is the Great Plains area. Now this this area here is going to come important when we start talking about the Dust Bowl during the Great Depression. We're going to revisit the Great Plains again. So this is some geography we need to know. Uh, Great Plains has some, there's some key facts we need to know about the Great Plains. That these are flat lands that rise gently from east to west. So as we go from the east and we go west, they're going to be a, a gradual rise upward in elevation of land. Okay. There's low rainfall there and it's very dry. 
Uh, dust storms are going to be common. And when we talk about the dust bowl, a severe drought and dust storm happens in this area. And then the land uh, uh, is going to be eroded by wind and water. Okay. If we look at a relief map of the area, we'll see this gradual or gentle, gentle rise from east to west here in this. The Great Plains, here we have these lowlands, and then there's going to be a increase and rise elevate land elevation and then we're going to hit the Rocky Mountains out here in these huge amount areas all right so that's the Great Plains that's where the Great Plains are there and a large part of the Louisiana purchase occurred in, in the United States acquired a large portion of the Great Plains all right so describe Jefferson's diplomacy in obtaining the Louisiana purchase from France we talked about that so we, now we'll talk about in the territory's exploration by Lewis and Clark. So the Lewis and Clark expedition is something we need to know for the EOCT. So Thomas Jefferson here has this vast territory that he just purchased. And uh, in 18, from 1804 to 1806, he commissions two people, Lewis and Clark, to find a northwestwardly uh, route to the Pacific Ocean. That's what he's looking for. Take the Missouri River, follow it all the way out into the Rocky Mountains, and find an all-water route or northwest route to the Pacific Ocean. That's what he tells them to look for. And in this Lewis and Clark Expedition, a Corps of Discovery, we commemorated it in 2002 on the back of a quarter, the Louisiana Purchase. Here. So if you still have a 2002 quarter, you can see that. All right. All right. So the Lewis and Clark expedition. Here's Lewis and Clark here. Um, it's called the Core of Discovery. It was initiated initiated by Thomas Jefferson. Okay. From 1804, 1804 to 1806. It's going to be a 16-month expedition. Now, while they're going looking for that Northwest Passage. They're going to be charting trails west, mapping rivers and mountain ranges. They're going to collect samples of unfamiliar animals and plants. They're going to send some of those animals and plants back to Thomas Jefferson. And, and so there's a lot of science going on here. They're going to record facts and figures about Native American ways of life, about tribes. Uh, west of the Mississippi River. So we can read these journals of the Lewis and Clark Expedition of Core Discovery and learn a lot about those. You know, if we look at those journals, that's a very important primary source for us to look at what these men found out there. And then what was their reason for going? So you can use that primary source if you need to in research. All right. So Thomas Jefferson commissions Lewis and Clark to find the Northwest Route to the Pacific Ocean. So if we look at which route they took on their core discovery or expedition, it was a northwesterly route. And see in 1804 Fort Mandan Winter Camp, 1805 Great Falls, Montana. And uh, it is here in this route that we meet Sacagawea, the Native American female who helped them through the Rocky Mountains, through the passes there. And she's going to be commemorated on the golden coin as well. She has a baby along the way. You study her as well. But she's not in our standards, but I thought I'd mention her. Alright, so so the Louisiana from Missouri here, uh, all the way over through the Louisiana Territory. The Lewis and Clark don't stop in the Louisiana Territory. They actually go into the Oregon Territory. The Oregon Territory. Their Oregon Country. We'll look at a different map here. Uh, go into the Oregon Country here that we're going to later claim as a territory, but right now uh, is, does not belong to the United States. So they go all the way through the Pacific, and Sacagawea is going to help them through these Rocky Mountain Passes and help them on their journey and expedition. And there's going to be a lot of writing about her and having her baby. Her husband was a French trader who traded furs with the French in the area. All right, and uh, so we see these Rocky Mountain r ranges over here and how Sucklage will help them through these passes. She knew the area well. So there's Louisiana Purchase. There's a Lewis and Clark Expedition route northwest really looking for this northwest passage to the Pacific Ocean. They reach it uh, with a lot of 
difficulty going through these mountain ranges. And so we see the the relief map over here of the Rocky Mountains. And when we start talking about westward expansion over in this area, we're going to talk about how difficult it was to get through the Sierra Nevada mountains here and how how this became an obstacle to westward expansion just like the Appalachian Mountains did over here in the beginning of our country. All right, so let's review real quick the Louisiana Purchase. The Louisiana Purchase, we're going to purchase from France. Uh, Thomas Jefferson's going to purchase uh, it from the purchase from France, for, and it's going to be Napoleon who's going to be leader of France, Emperor of France, and that that purchase is going to double the size of the United States. It's going to be a huge impact. It's going to double the size of the United States. Uh, Jefferson originally wanted to control. He wanted to control the Mississippi River uh, to improve trade and commerce for those people out west past the Appalachian Mountains. And originally, he just wanted to buy the port of New Orleans. But his diplomacy is going to allow for the purchase of all of New Orleans, all of New Orleans and the Louisiana Territory, for just fifteen million dollars. And we know that the purchase is going to challenge Thomas Jefferson's ideas about the interpretation of the Constitution. And then Lewis and Clark are going to be looking for a Northwest Passage to the Pacific Ocean. So this is a review of our understanding of the Louisiana Purchase. You can pause this and look back over it too and review it and summarize. Alright, so have we met our original standard? What were, what were we supposed to learn? Describe Jefferson's diplomacy in obtaining the Louisiana Purchase from France and the territory's exploration by Lewis and Clark. I think we have. Watch the video again. Good luck on the test.